Basically, switching is a method of establishing connections and sending information between nodes on a network. Additionally, circuit switching establishes a, s a solid connection between two devices on a network before they be begin transmitting data and guaranteeing that the two devices have, have exclusive use of the communication channel. Recall our discussion of the PSTN, or the Old Public Switch Telephone Network. Here is a good illustration of a completed circuit that is established between <coughs> two telephones in the PSTN. The circuit is completed by a route automatically selected by switches in various phone company central offices. Once established, the circuit has a high degree of reliability. By the way, the phone companies are required to have a 99.999% reliability or just a few minutes of downtime every year. So it's extremely reliable, the present system. Here is a message switching circuit data network in which messages are temporarily stored on servers, perhaps until forward circuits are relieved of heavy traffic, then the server sends it forward. Email is transmitted on a message switch circuit data network. This sl slide illustrates the new packet switch networks. Packet switching is a method of switching in which data are separated into packets before they are transported. Packets are free to travel to their destination because each packet contains a destination address and information about where its data belongs in the data stream. Packets are assembled in a proper order at the receiving end. Telecommunication, telecommunication switching systems are the combined collection of all hardware and software that establishes connections between lines and trunks in order to complete calls. Although makes and models differ, uh, differ between manufacturers, all modern telecommunication switches share four essential elements. First, switching matrix, or the internal connections between incoming and outgoing lines or circuits. A switching matrix could also be called a, a switching fabric. Line or trunk circuits are the means of connecting to local lines or other trunk lines. Line circuits may be either digital or analog depending upon the line being connected. Third of the essential elements is a central control computer. This is the part of the switch that interprets incoming data, retrieves data, and issues command to the commands to the rest of the switch. The central control computer typically includes multiple processes among other components. And lastly, the common equipment are the components necessary to keep the switch running at all times, such as a power supply, battery, testing equipment, and distribution frames for, uh, frames for incoming wires. Now let's take a look at what happens in the local switching environment. A local switching system performs switching that is located in the telephone company's central office or end office and performs the following functions. It provides dial tone to a local subscriber, accepts and interprets signals including off-hook notification, dial tones and so on from the local subscriber, receives signals from the destination's local switch about when to terminate the call, records local subscriber billing information, stores information about subscribers, such as what type of service they have chosen in a subscriber's database, and lastly, tests and maintains the subscriber's local loop. Now let's take a look at what happens in switching an intra-office call. Recall that intra means inside and inter means between. So this is basically what happens inside the local or in phone company's central office. In other words, subscribers A and B are within the same area code. This uh, slide illustrates the connection between a phone, its line port, and the components of a local switch, and the following is an abbreviated description of how the call is made. 
First, the, the subscriber line interface unit, or the SLIC, provides power to the telephone and detects off-hook conditions. After the incoming analog call passes through the SLIC, it is converted into a digital signal in the part of the switch known as the codec, or coder-decoder, via PCM, which we've talked about, the pulse code modulation techniques. The incoming signal is then detected by the line group controller, or IGC, a component that monitors the status, uh, the status of hundreds of SLICs. The SLIC, in turn, informs the central control computer that the subscriber wants to make the call. Lastly, the computer issues the commands to establish the circuit between the subscribers. A tandem switch, which is located at the telephone company's tandem offices and connects trunk lines, may perform the following functions. Provide termination for trunks at class one, two, three, and four central offices. Gather and transmit information about telephone network traffic and congestion. And congestion. Determine the fastest path over the PSTN for long distance calls. Carry data and voice signals between central offices. Test and maintain trunks. And finally, assist in trunk configuration. A long distance call starts just like a local call. At the end office, the LGC is, the scan, is, is scanning the, the SLICs, waiting for one of them to indicate an awful condition. After detection, it passes the digital signal to the computer. When the central control computer searches its database and determines that the destination line is not one that connects to its central office, it processes the best route available of the PSTN to connect the circuit between subscribers. Because tandem switches are primarily responsible for directing traffic over highly utilized trunks, they must be able to sense traffic patterns and adjust phone call routing quickly. Here are examples of two switches that perform all the tasks that we've previously discussed. They're the Lucent's 5 ESS and Nort Nortel's DM. S200 switches. Note the huge size and complexity and obviously the, the high cost um, of both of these types of switches. Switch signaling is the exchange of information between the components of a telephone network or system for the purposes of establishing, monitoring, or releasing phone circuits, as well as controlling system operations. Switch signaling functions include transmitting address information, supervising and transmitting information. Here is an illustration of the Common Channel System, or CCS, developed by AT&T in the 1970s to, to, to supervise and control traffic over trunk lines between central offices. However, most modern networks use signal system number 7, or SS7, which alerts, addresses, supervise, and, transmission, and transmits information over digital networks. In summary, modulation is a signaling process technique in which an information wave is imposed or, or, or combined with a carrier wave to create a unique wave pattern. Common methods of multiplexing includes frequency division multiplexing, time division multiplexing, statistical multiplexing, and wave division multiplexing. Switching is a method of establishing connections and sending information between nodes on the network. This completes Module 6, Telcom Module 6, so please take Quiz 6 before going on to Module 7, and I'll see you in Module 7.